I created this little video to demonstrate and talk about how you can go uh, beyond automating things on the ServiceNow platform and now go and automate things uh, in outside of the ServiceNow platform, like legacy system, for example, using our RPA technology. So I came up with a totally fictitious use case that is kind of very simple, but I hope I can cover some of the key concepts of the ServiceNow RPA technology and how this works together with the rest of the ServiceNow capability. So the process I'm trying to illustrate is some kind of UI interaction on a workstation to open a website, look up for some information on that web interface in a browser, and parse a table, grab some kind of value, and bring it back to ServiceNow. So that's kind of a fictitious use, use case. So this is really to showcase uh, the ServiceNow RPA technology, and then I'm going to explain how this um, is all integrated with the rest of the platform. So the process I'm going to be showing in the demo is the robot opening a browser on a workstation. So that's the RPA robot doing this, opening a web uh, URL, but it could be any legacy application, it doesn't have to be a web app. In that case, I'm just going to go on Yahoo Finance and I've built the robot, the robot to go and find a specific section of that website. So the robot is going to go click the crypto section and then I wanted to, to show how it, easy it is to parse whatever HTML table. So I'm going to be grabbing from the robot that table and do a lookup for a specific information. Uh, for example, for the, a specific symbol. Um, so it's a cryptographic cri crypto uh, values that you see on the right and that is crypto name on the left. So the parameter of that bot process would be um, you, uh, one, one of those values there and it should return, the goal of the robot is to go and grab the value for that particular crypto name. And so there is a process parameter that would be given to the robot to go and find that uh, value from the website. So that's kind of the, the use case I'm going to be using. It's a very simple use case, but at least we can show how this works with the rest of the platform. In my example, uh, it would be too simple if I show a workflow on ServiceNow that's trigger an RPA robot in ServiceNow. So I want to go a little bit beyond that. Uh, I'm going to be calling a workflow from Postman. Postman is a utility that developers use to try and play with API. So I'm going to use Postman to make an API call to a ServiceNow workflow. Uh, and the reason why I use Postman is you can see if I can do it with Postman, any application who can make some kind of webhook API call to ServiceNow will be able to trigger some kind of workflow on, in the platform. So that's what I'm, I'm trying to illustrate there. The, the REST API call I'm going to be making is going to pass the crypto name. And the crypto name, then I'm going to be using it from the robot to pass the value of, of that crypto in the Yahoo Finance website. So the first thing, the way I've decided to design this solution is to create a workflow with a, what we call a, a, a workflow trigger, API trigger. So basically, when I'm creating a workflow, I can put business logic, but also decide how this workflow is going to be triggered. And you note that I'm not calling from the API directly an RPA robot. You could do that because we have API for that. But because ServiceNow has a workflow engine, I find it easier to put the business logic in the workflow engine rather than trying to put some kind of business logic directly in the robot automation, which is normally the robot is just used to automate things in a UI. Uh, in my opinion, any business logic should be, should be uh, done at the workflow engine level. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm doing this right there. So I'm passing the crypto name to the workflow that I'm triggering from the API call. And then I've designed the workflow to add the metadata, that crypto name, in a specific RPA queue. The RPA queue is still on the ServiceNow platform. It's part of um, what we call RPA Hub. It's our um, RPA solution on the platform. So this action is pretty simple. It's just a no-code step to add some metadata in the RPA queue. Since this is sitting on the same platform, it's a simple workflow. At this point, 
um, have some triggering condition to execute the robot uh, and the robot is going to use the automation I've built to open the website of Yahoo Finance, leverage the metadata that is going to grab from the queue, from the work item in the queue, and then do a lookup uh, in the table that he got from the website. And then from there, we are updating the work item with the value for that particular crypto name. My demo won't do anything goes, but in real life, probably won't upon completion of that work item, once this work item is marked as completed or success, you could have some other business logic to say, hey, the robot has performed the task, now I need to assign a new task to another robot or maybe a human being who's going to have to fulfill some sort of request or continue to fulfill the service uh, uh, for that particular process. Here I'm just ending there the, the demonstration. So let's, um, let's jump into the demo and, and see how that works. Here, I'm, as I explained in the, in the presentation, I'm using Postman. Postman, this is what I use as a developer to play with API. Here I'm just calling my workflow that has an API trigger and I'm going to be passing the crypto name. And just to be to completely transparent, I want to show you where I got this crypto name from the Yahoo website. I'm just going to go on Yahoo Finance from that machine. I'm going to be performing exactly what the robot is going to be doing, finding the crypto section and looking up a bunch of uh, information in the table. I'm going to take the first one, the e maybe I'm going to take the ETH USD, this one, I'm going to copy paste. I want the robot to do everything there, open the web page, load the table and find the value for this, uh, um, I can't even pronounce Ethereum uh, crypto and find that column. I could tell, tell, configure my robot to pick whatever column and navigate through the different pages um, this is a simple use case. I'm just going to give the robot uh, or the workflow uh, this as an entry, uh, as an input, and then the workflow and the robot is going to do the rest. I'm going to be closing the, the browser because the robot is going to actually open, uh, open this. So now I'm updating the, the parameter. And those parameters, you see it because I've built the flow with a specific API trigger and I've designed with no code I added in a no-code workflow uh, what are the API parameters that I want to make available. If I update the query, the request, now in the URL, you can see the crypto name. And I'm authenticating using a basic authentication. You can, there's many authentication mechanisms we support. That's just the, the, the way it's configured right now. As soon as I click send, this is going to be calling the workflow. That's going to be putting the, uh, creating a work item in the RPA queue. And you see in the background, it's actually uh, triggering the robot on that virtual machine because we have the service now RPA agent configured on that machine. So the workflow has added the work item, put the crypto name in the queue. The robot has detected that there is something in the queue to process and just following the automation, opening the page, taking my parameter, grabbing the value from the table and updating the work item. I believe the robot is done. Um, the robot is done, you know, with the, that particular automation. Now maybe we can take two minutes to inspect what the robot has done. So I, I want to start by showing you the, the workflow. That's a simple workflow I created. That's a workflow I'm calling from the REST API. So you see there is a REST API trigger that with the specific path that was created. And, and that's pretty much it, you know, that, that, that just a simple REST API trigger. If I keep going there, I'm adding the work queue item. Uh, so I'm taking the, the parameter that I'm passing with the, the REST API utility Postman, and I'm using it to create a work item in the RPA queue in the ServiceNow RPA Hub application. So that's exactly what the workflow is doing. Once I do that, I decided to start the process right away. In our terminology, we call this a bot process. I'm just, the workflow is driving all of that. It's saying, hey, there's a new work item. Please execute that work item right away. We could configure the different way and say it's a scheduled workflow and every five minutes, uh, a scheduled robot every five minutes, the bot process is gonna check the queue. Is there a new work item in the queue? In my case, I just want to execute right away. That's just a configuration point I decided to, to put together. Going back to, um, go, 
going to the RPA queue, I want to show you if I go to RPA specifically, uh, now that we, we, we've seen the workflow with the trigger, I want to show you the RPA queue and, and see what's happening when the workflow is adding a work item in the queue. So I'm going to be navigating through the queue of my RPA solution. I'm in the RPA workspace and going into the, in, in that workspace, I can navigate through the queue. And the queue is to pass that metadata from workflow to the robot, but also for the robot to update that work item, to pass additional information that the, like in my example, the robot went to write the value for that particular crypto name. So he, uh, the robot updated that work item. So I'm opening the crypto queue and you'll see that's how you pass a job to robot. There's 10 work queue item. And if I navigate through it, I'm going to close this. You can see I've done many, many different tests. And that's the one we just executed 946. It's 949 on my computer. So let's inspect this one and look uh, what type of configuration we have. So I have this work item with actually under, just as a sign note, we keep an history, uh, history trail of every action done for that work item and we manage the life cycle of that work item. When the robot is done processing that work item, is, the robot can mark the work, work item as success pending or you can even reassign to another robot. There's a whole life cycle management there. See the request content that was added by the workflow. First, I've called using the Postman I've called the workflow passing that value. Then I've designed my flow in Flow Designer to take that information and create a work item in the RPA queue. That's what you see there. Then the workflow, the robot executed the automation, grabbed the value and updated the response content. That's part of the, the way I've built the robot is to open Google Chrome, go in Yahoo Finance, open the crypto section, find that crypto name and grab the value from that table. How I've done that, I'm going to open the RPA uh, studio uh, so you can see how I've built my uh, automation for that particular use case. Here, I'm going to be opening RPA studio on that machine. This is where I've built the automation. This is ServiceNow RPA design studio to define all the different UI automation step you want your robot to perform. The first step, first activity is to pick up that work item from the RPA Hub queue. See, uh, and I took that, there is no code involved. I took that particular component in the library, in the toolbox. You define the work queue item there as in the global object, give it the name of the queue. So that's what I've done there is a queue with a specific name, crypto. This correspond to if I go back to my brother, I'm going to just go back, make sure everybody understand. This is the name of the queue, uh, work queue crypto, right? Just want to make sure it's clear. I pick the first available work item. From there, I can even put some logic. Say if there is 10 work item, I want to take the first one. And then when I'm done and take the other one, you basically design the way you put your whatever logic you want in there. So that's the first uh, step. If I go back to the high level activity, the next one is to actually perform the UI automation. So if I go and scroll on the left hand side, I'm using pre-built component to navigate through a website. So navigate takes, you know, some parameter. I'm putting, I'm waiting for the screen to have the web page open and, and then make decision. If I can see the table, then I go click. If I can see the crypto tab on the website, I click on it. So like whatever error handling and condition I want. This is, these are the steps to navigate through the web interface of Yahoo Finance. I want to highlight some of these things. Get table is a very convenient uh, component to, to grab an HTML table and use it as a data table object. And then I can navigate like I was na I'm navigating through an Excel spreadsheet or a database. So here I just said, hey, take that crypto name and search for that crypto name in that table and return the column number one is start with number two. So that's basically what the automation is doing to grab the value I'm looking for and then basically close the browser. So that's how I've built that uh, particular use case. And 
And at the end, if I go back to, to the end-to-end -end workflow, the last step I'm doing with that robot is to update the work item. I'm actually updating the queue, uh, the, the queue work item with the value I've retrieved, and I'm marking the work item as success. So here I'm passing from my variable the value, you can see the data 1.6 or 7, and passing that back to the work item as a response content, and I'm marking the work item as success, so no other robot are going to try to, um, to use it. And I'm going to reopen the work item to really close the loop on that. Here you can see that's a response provided by the, by the robot there. So that was updated directly by the robot and you can see there by Q. That's the name of the robot, basically the name of the virtual machine. So that was a simple use case. Just want to recap uh, what we've seen, um, just to make sure it's clear. I've executed, I've requested the workflow to be triggered by, by Postman and I'm, I passed the crypto name from Postman just making an API call to a workflow that has an API trigger. That workflow was designed to add the RPA work item in the queue in ServiceNow. And, based on that, and the workflow was also designed to trigger step number four, trigger the robot that's going to be performing the UI, UI automation in using Google Chrome, navigating through the website, grabbing the tables and find the value. And then the last step of my uh, automation was to update the work item with the value we retrieved from that website. So that's what we, uh, we've seen. So this, this type of logic would be pretty much for any uh, RPA automation use case on the ServiceNow platform uh, could, could, could be the same, having some workflow, executing some kind of business logic, whether or not it's an um, employee workflow, CSM workflow, IT workflow, or App Engine application that you've built that has some kind of business logic you can trigger some RPA, um, RPA robots uh, and then do whatever you want with the metadata that you retrieved from the RPA, uh, RPA robot in there. So I'm just going to stop here and I hope it was valuable for you. Bye.